have to have a social media presence, period. You do. There's going to be a lot of people, and I talk to a lot of artists um, in the older generation that don't want to deal with it. They don't want to have, don't want to have to worry about it. They don't want to worry about a website. They don't want to worry about social media. This is how you find the people that want to buy what you're selling. There is over... 900 million people on Facebook. It's a lot. That is a huge amount of people that could be finding your art. Social media, the best type of marketing besides email marketing is word of mouth. Advertising, right? So if you're on Facebook, you only have a certain amount of friends. It's true, but those friends have more friends. So if they, if you create a piece, I had something happen the other day. I created a piece for, um, created a piece for somebody. They, I gave it to them, took a picture of it, put it on Facebook. Um, somebody, it was a cool piece. Somebody liked it. Somebody else liked it. I got a message from somebody in Canada that said, "I saw this piece you did. It was awesome. Uh, I went to your website. Fantastic." Um, I'd like to talk to you about, you know, some of the other pieces that you have. <laughs> I have no clue who this dude is. It's a friend of a friend of a brother of an uncle, sister's aunt's dog. <laughs> found me in Canada because of Facebook. I wasn't trying to sell the piece. I just put it out there because it was already gone. It was done. Um, so something to talk about. It was something to talk about. It it was interesting. They liked it. Yes. So do you do you keep your um, personal and your Somewhat separate, but not really. Um, and the Mitchellex do a great job of this. If you want to see somebody that does a really good job of doing Facebook um, with their business, uh, look at Elizabeth, uh, Santiago Fine Art. Um, they do a fantastic job. I'm the I'm the cobbler that has bad shoes. I do it, and I do good, I do a decent job of it. But I'm so busy, I'm not always doing my my own the way I should. Um, but they do a great job, and it, it's partly what people want to see and how you get to the point where you're building your contact list and people, you're getting those seven to ten interactions, you're building these people and you're wanting, these people are wanting to know who you are and buy your pieces. It's making sure you have interesting stuff going on, and part of that is, hey, I just finished a piece. And if you're wanting to buy it, it's this price, and hallelujah, you know, come buy it. Or um, I, you sold a piece and you put it up for, for, and say, hey, look, there's a beautiful piece that's done, it's gone. Or my kid just did something funny. And they were in my studio and, you know, they put some paint on the dog. That not, has really nothing to do with your art, but it's interesting and people love that. Yeah? This is probably a whole other session, but how do you know how much to ask for your art? Yeah, that's a whole nother session. <laughs> <laughs> um, because that just depends on what your artist, what you feel your art is worth. And Elizabeth talked about this a little bit when she talked about the commissions. Uh, Santiago doesn't really like doing commissions, so he charges 20% more to do it. If somebody really wants a commission, it's worth its time to do it. If not, it's really not worth his headache to do a commission. And some people will do that a lot. And some people will say, well, I'm not making any money, so I'm going to take anything and everything that comes through my front door. doesn't matter what it is or what they're asking for. I'm going to do it because I need to make money. I need to support my family. You have to find out what it's worth to you. Um, sometimes it's not worth it. Sometimes uh -huh. it is. Yeah. I have a question. Yeah. What, yeah, and it might be hard to answer, but what would be your, like, weekly internet schedule like you know first I do Facebook then I do this like do you have a kind of a well so this is the way I do it and when I'm teaching clients and people how to do this is you should take as far as you're talking about internet marketing you should take an hour a day and whether it's Facebook and you, you split up the way you want it some people love Facebook some people love Instagram some people love whatever 
Pinterest is a big one. I have it on my phone, so I can do Pinterest while I'm waiting to get my tire fixed or whatever else you're doing sitting down um, throughout the day for however much time. Um, so I can do stuff on my phone and I post a picture or I like stuff on Instagram or I'm doing Pinterest or however that looks. So I can do it throughout the day. But um, a lot of my successful, a lot of successful people say, they wake up in the morning and they say, I'm gonna do an hour first thing in the morning. Or they say, I have from one to two o'clock. It doesn't take a ton of time. If you're doing it every day, it doesn't take a ton of time. You say, you create a Facebook post that says, what you did or whatever, what's interesting, what's going on, or it doesn't even have to be about you. You can say, I ran into a great artist today. Uh, I love his work, you should take a look at it. People love when you're sharing other people's stuff as well, not just marketing your stuff. Do you link them all together? Like website, LinkedIn to the Facebook? Yeah, I do. Everything is linked for me. My so Facebook, Frank Baker Art, so on that Facebook, my okay. Instagram. So when you do a blog, it, it is connected to all the others? Yeah, so I'll do a blog and it'll post to my Facebook. And there's automatic ways to do that with some of the stuff. But you don't have to. You can just URL in and say, I just made a blog post. You should read it. Yeah. Um, or here's, here's my link and they can go read it. Go to your website and create that, generating that people. Um, there's a ton of stuff. And I've only skimmed the surface because there's, a, I mean, I want to talk about um, how you create your website to, and maybe this is a completely different thing and we can talk about it later, but you guys need to figure out what your niche is. Who, who are the people that are looking for you? This is some, something that, from what I've, from talking to artists and talking to marketing people and just businesses in general, they have a tough time necessarily saying, this is my niche and these are the people that like, and wanna buy what I do or what I have. It's a tough thing. Um, <coughs> to figure out exactly what that is. And sometimes you don't know because you don't know. You don't know what you don't know. Um, but you gotta think about that. So I'm a wire artist. I consider myself a wire artist. I, I create sculptures out of wire or I'll paint with wire and uh, draw with wire and a bunch of different stuff. Um, so kind of my niche is wire art. If you type in wire <coughs> artist or wire art on Google, I guess who shows up? I do, because that's my niche. I'm not going after art. So you type in art in Google, I'm not gonna show up, because that's not my niche, that's way too broad. Find out what your niche is and talk about it on your website. My niche is beautiful gourds. Um, you know, I don't know how you'd explain your gourds, but that's your niche, and, and Pete, there's, like I said, there is somebody to buy anything you make. You have to get in front of them, you have to find them. And it's creating that niche for yourself, figuring out what that niche is, and then finding the people. Even if there's only a thousand people in the world that like what you do, that's a thousand people. If you find out who they are and they're gonna buy your work, that's great. That's a lot of money. Yeah. Do you have to do anything specific to get your name to pop up on like one of the first page or two of Google? Yep. Okay, that's what I thought. Um, <laughs> and there's, oh, but, Rule of thumb without getting too into the weeds and spending another two hours with you is talk about content, content, content. Talk about who you are, what you are, and what your niche is. If you want to show up for wire art, make sure you're talking about it. And your blog posts say wire art and wire sculpture. And you explain your piece and you explain those keywords and those things that you think people will be searching for to find you. Beautiful gourds or handmade gourds or painted gourds or... What would you say? What would people? What would you say people would search for to find what you do? How would you explain what you do? Uh, usually, usually gourd art. Gourd art. So you use gourd art. So kind of like what you do on Instagram with hashtags. You're thinking like keywords. Yes. That you're it's putting the it's the concept. Yeah, you're okay. thinking about keywords. what that is. And with Instagram, you can be a lot more broad because you want you can type in hashtag it as fine art because yeah. it's really broad and you love everybody looking for fine art to see your stuff. It's a little bit different because the search engines really fast. They're looking for two things. They're looking for trust and authority to rank you, to get your name to the top under whatever keyword trust. you're looking. Trust and authority. Trust, authority comes from what your website's talking about. So how many times does wire art or fine, uh, you know, whatever gourd art show up? If your, art, if your pages, different pages on your website say gourd art a lot, 
it gives you the authority that Google says, oh, well, they must be relevant for court art, so they should be ranked. Secondly, it's called um, trust. And how do you get that trust? And this is where my job becomes why people pay me to do what I do is because this is more difficult is finding that trust. And that trust, basically, it's people voting for you online. And how people vote for you is people linking back to your site. So if you have somebody else talking about you and they put your website on their website, that's a link, that's a vote of trust. So the more of those you have coming from good sources, the more Google's going to rank you. Yeah. Uh, my, my brother is one of the um, Wikipedia people that approve Wikipedia things. Oh, cool. And I asked him, he lives in Texas, and anyway, he said, because uh, uh, he helped me put up my site, and he said, you need to have like newspaper articles or articles where somebody's written about you or that something that builds trust. Mm -hmm. So for Wikipedia, before Wikipedia will put it in as a, as a, you can't just say, I did this. You have to have proof from yep. like two or three sources of identification. And so other places have to identify you even to get onto Wikipedia. Yep. It's a trust factor and creating articles and press releases and those types of things is part of what I do. Um, but you can do them yourself, and there's uh, there's places online, PR web, that you can create. You can write your own article about yourself and publish it, and get it out there. And there's different ways to do that. Um, we're really getting into some weeds of like some detailed detail about how to do stuff, and that's fine. That's what you guys want to talk about. Um, it just yeah. On YouTube, um, I probably get a new subscriber every day cool. and uh, what's interesting is that they say that you should subscribe to people who um, who have other good content uh -huh. but I don't know how to determine what good content is you know like I'll go look at this person and then it's Do you like to watch and, their videos well yeah I mean like this one guy uh, he just signed up and he was uh, and everything he did was about dreadlocks <laughs> and I just did not see how that would help did you this like it? <laughs> no, it was scary. Well, <laughs> then it's not good content for you. <laughs> but and then you but follow someone else. Okay. And so there's, there's a reason they're called dread. <laughs> <laughs> and they originated in Ethiopia. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. And they would, they would, seriously, and people would dread when they would see these holy men because they weren't sure if they were. Holy enough to uh -huh. interact with the holy man. That's cool. I like that. Learn something. Well, maybe I should have signed up. You didn't learn anything from me. You didn't learn anything from me. <laughs> All right, yeah, that's good stuff. Um, anyway, so we might want have to do another one of these. I mean, there's I could do something specifically just on how to rank your search engine optimization and how to get your so website ranking. But the rule of thumb is create content that people want to look at, people want to see, and like I said, there's there's somebody that wants to write, watch that dreadlock channel. People that are interested in it, and so he's creating content for that, and there's people that are following him. And there's somebody out there, and there's people out there that's going to buy whatever that it is, and there's content, and there's, no matter how weird you think you are, and how niche you think your art is, there's people out there that want to buy it. It's, it's finding those people and it's getting in front of those. And so these, some of these tactics that we talked about, and we didn't even get into like MailChimp and those types of things, but um, it's finding those people. M-A-I-L? Yes, MailChimp. C-H-I-M-P? Yep. Hmm. Like a mail monkey. Yeah. Um, it's, it's finding those people, and then once you've found those people, being able to interact with those people as much as you can to keep them forefront, frontal lobe. Um, <laughs> and to sell to them. And it's, it, it's a vicious cycle and it's a hard one, but once you get some basic tactics down, um, you guys, it, you can be really successful at what you do. Any if questions? you would help us, you would contact you, you would help us, do that as your I will, answer, I will answer questions. If you want me to do stuff for you, you, I, you can, you know, if someone wants me to build them a website, I will build them a website. So you sell your time. Yeah, um, but if you guys just want simple questions answered, call me.
bathroom for you. I'll spend time with you on the phone. And He'll write a blog about it. <laughs> write a blog about it or whatever we'll else. We'll start following you and then we'll be trusted. <laughs> yes. So, um, yeah, and there's different types of things you can do. Yeah. Do you suggest putting prices on the website on your pieces or not? I do not, and I do get a lot of emails from people asking me prices, and I probably wouldn't get their emails if I had right. prices on there. But That's a very personal thing. Uh, and there's some people, if you're, yeah. Um, so we decide not to put prices, but then you, know, you get all the emails um, that maybe if you had the prices, that would have. That you wouldn't get. Yeah, so yeah. what I like and what we're going to implement the next time we do a website update is um, another artist who we mimic a lot of what he does. He lists a price range. So he says, my pieces range from $100. Which, which artist is that? Um, James Ayers. It's James, and then last name, A-Y-E-R-S. <coughs> um, he is what we aspire to be online and in every way, <laughs> with 9,000 Facebook followers and everything else. But um, So we will list a uh, range. Um, and part of that, too, is because our prices go up once or twice a year now. And so I don't want someone to see, oh, well, I'm buying a piece that's the same size. Why am I yeah. paying more down the road? Yeah. Because you never want to have your prices different in different places. Yeah. <laughs> so we will list a range, but not specific. Okay. Um, and then listing, too, that, you know, if you're interested in commission, this is the wait time, and this is, it, and it's, this range plus 25%. Okay. And Elizabeth and Santiago have a wide range of places that they sell. I know people that just sell art online. That's all they do. It's all they create a living. Their living is online and they don't have a gallery and they've gotten out of that because it's tough to work with a gallery and the gallery takes 50%, 40% or whatever. So they have a niche, they found it, they built it, and they sell. Sometimes they sell their pieces before they're done because they're Facebooking it and they're blogging it and their followers know they have a piece coming out and they're like, hey, I want that. It's bought before it's completed. That's fantastic. That's a great problem to have. All of you would love to have that problem. <laughs> um, and they have their prices online because that's all they do is sell online. But And it's very personal of how you want to build that business. That's where your marketing plan comes in, your business plan. You figure out who you are and what how you have to look. And it's gonna be different for every single one of you. A little bit different, but there are some basic rules of thumb. Any other questions? I know I I don't know how long this was supposed to go or however About that looked. Well seven to eight we've already over, but what is your uh, do you, can you tell prices or do you have a prices of what's what? your number it's a range. <laughs> a range, yeah. yeah, I know it's a range. It's a range. No, it's just, it really depends on what you want. Like I said, if you want free advice, I'm happy to give it to you. Uh, I want people to be successful. So if you have a question and you're like, I don't know how to do this, call me or shoot me an email or I'll be happy to answer that for you if you guys want to do it yourself. If you don't, call me and we can talk about building a website. And there's, I've built websites from a hundred and fifty dollars to fifteen thousand so you know there's a wide range there um, the fifteen thousand dollar one could facial recognition so there's a bunch of you know you don't need that <laughs> but you know there's a wide range of, of what and we talk about what you want and if you want to do marketing and those types of things um, you can do a lot of it yourself don't be scared to try to try it out and HubSpot, I don't know if we gave that out yet. HubSpot's a great um, place to get information. H-U-B spots. All one word. All one spot, yeah. Information on marketing, um, internet marketing, how to market on Facebook. They have a bunch of different stuff. They create great content. Obviously, they want to get your email address, and they want to actually market to you so you buy something from them, but they do give a lot of free stuff away. <coughs> and so there's it's great information there for anybody that wants it. Um, I think Elizabeth gave you some of the other ones that, that I use and that we use um, as far as free stuff goes. And there's, there's a ton of information online if you are searching for something. But if, I, if you were going to walk away with two things, um, figure out what your niche is or how people perceive you as a niche. You're broad. You're an artist. Okay, great. What kind of artist are you? And find your niche. Who are you? Are you sculpt? 
Horses? Okay, your horse sculpture. Or, you know, what is it? You do abstract whales? I don't know. What is it that you do? You know, figure out what that is and then try and figure out who your audience is and try and figure out how you get to in front of those people. And with the online world the way it is and it's only growing, the best thing to happen to the independent artist, I believe, is, is social networking. It's the best thing that's happened. And if you're not using it as an independent artist, you are not, you're not doing all you can do to be successful. Hey, you even know that I'm old, so I ask you this question. <laughs> but, um, I, I, I'm not sure what Instagram is. What, how does that work? I mean, I've seen reference to it. Seen Instagrams is another, it's a type of social media network, and it's based solely on photography, photographs, and sharing your photos with the world. Okay, so it, is it through is it through a phone or is it, it is through a phone. Um, it's actually Facebook bought them, and if you want to know details, they bought them for a billion dollars last year. I've never heard of it. Or when uh, your son marries somebody and you become an Instagram. So are they taking your photos? No, you're, you're taking your, you're taking your own photos and you're posting them online and you're sharing them with the world and people are liking them, and they don't actually share them. You, you get followers by posting good content. It's a little bit different. It's different than Pinterest, where in Pinterest you take your stuff or you take other people's stuff and you're like, oh, it's an interesting painting. I'm going to put it in my painting folder. Uh, this is sculpture. I'm going to pin it over here. Um, and you're sharing it that way. With this, with Instagram, you're creating your own content and giving it to the world to look at, to see. And hashtags, if you don't know what those are, you can tag the photos with what it is. So if it's a piece of fine art, you hashtag it with fine art or abstract art or sculpture or anything you want. You can tag it with anything you want. And there's people that search for, it's like a search engine, they can search for a certain hashtag, fine art, and find all the pictures that have been tagged with fine art and look through them without getting into too much detail. Any other questions? What is, what's, what's your husband's website again? Sure, it's Santiago Michelek, and you spell it S-A-N-T-I-A-G-O-M-I-C-H-A-L-E-K dot com. That isn't an artist's name. I don't know what it is. Can you spell that last name again? Sure. I don't know why I'm having a problem. S-A-N-T-I-A-G-O-M-I-C-H-A-L-E-K dot com. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? Like I said, they, I could talk for four hours. We've only scratched the surface. We're all going to run home and find an edge. Yeah, find an edge. <laughs> now, I'm going to put a sheet of paper in the back there. And if you want any kind of workshop, for instance, if you want another one with Frank, or if you want you know, anything that you've thought of and go, oh, I wish I knew more about that as an artist. Would you um, write that down? Because we would like to have more. I think as the Utah County Art Board, that's one of our purposes, is to help you be successful. And are you just going to post these seminars on your website? Uh -huh. Or do you sign up for them? And you yeah, and um, we have, uh, and if we don't have your email, if you didn't get an email to be invited to this, make sure I get your email too. Or because if you guys want to be, if you want me to email you anything, put it on a piece, I don't know, get another piece of paper. And what if you email down. to her and she can blast us? Yeah, you can do that as well. Um, do, but if you guys you. have any questions, don't hesitate to get on my website. Yeah. You know, It'd be nice if both of you did. Email her and you could blast us with the little thing about their websites and content. Okay. No problem. All right. Well, awesome. Well, thank you very much.